A new report released by the McDonald Laurier Institute questions Canada's reliance on foreign intelligence and how these measures could put Canadians at risk. The report comes on the heels of a recent court decision to put the brakes on a Canadian security intelligence service request to collect foreign information, something that is outside of their legal provisions. However, that leaves Canada as the only major democracy without its own foreign intelligence, lagging behind its other G7 partners. Report authors Christian Luprecht and Arthur Cockfield argue that this could also put Canadians at risk. Well, joining us now is Mr. Christian Luprecht, professor at the Royal Military College and Queen's University, and Senior Fellow at the Macdonald Laurier Institute. Always great having you on the show, sir. Hello, my pleasure. So uh, what do we know so far about the threat of foreign interference in Canada? How prominent is this? So this has become part and parcel of the geostrategic game of persistent, a very persistent, competitive, contested geopolitical environment below the threshold of nuclear attack. And so we are constantly seeing in the political domain, the economic domain, the military domain being pressed on all those sides. And that includes active and persistent efforts at foreign interference in Canada and our domestic institutions, our domestic policies, our domestic politics, and our economy by adversaries that are on the one hand like trying to get the leg up, and on the other hand, trying to undermine our own institutions and our ability to function both as a democracy and to preserve Canadian prosperity. So how does Canada currently tackle this issue and gather foreign information to protect against maybe further interference inside our borders? So the Canadian Security Intelligence Service is a security service in the sense that it has primarily a domestic mandate and it has a very limited ability to collect uh, human intelligence outside of Canada that was recently limited further by a federal court decision. Um, and we also have a, for, a signals intelligence service, the Communication Security Establishment, that gathers data and communications from abroad. Uh, but what we do not have is a human uh, source collection for an intelligence service. So we are we don't actively have boots in the, on the ground uh, with the exception of very limited constraints. So that means uh, that we either have to rely on third parties uh, for intelligence um, or we have to be able to piece together um, intelligence from the limited sources that we have on our own. And that means the government of Canada does not have the strategic awareness and the capacities that it needs in order to push back against these efforts directed not just against us, but against us and our partners. So it sounds like we do rely on other nations. Uh, so just how reliant is Canada to these other nations for taking actions on behalf of our national interests? So since we don't have a foreign human intelligence service, we are extremely reliant when it comes to uh, individuals, boots on the ground, and other capacities beyond data and uh, and communications to get a strategic picture of uh, of what is happening. And Canada is the only G7 country that finds itself in this situation, so we're kind of the poor cousin. And it's a suggestion that Canada is not pulling its weight in this increasingly competitive and contested environment with very persistent adversaries. Now, considering that sharing such uh, information with other uh, na other uh, nations, uh, how does this impact our overall national security? So it means one of the challenges is by not having a foreign human intelligence service, CSIS is very constrained uh, in how it can collect intelligence and what intelligence it, it can collect in order to make sure it is compliant with its mandate, with its statute, and with the Constitution. Having a separate foreign intelligence service would allow us to collect broader elements of intelligence and would allow us to use this intelligence differently because we would not be uh, facing the same constraints that CSIS currently faces. So how would allowing CSIS to uh, gather or, or have a separate foreign intelligence service improve the safety and security of individual Canadians? Uh, bringing this back to our viewers. So very important question. So these are the two options on the table. You could broaden the CSIS mandate, uh, but there's a whole host of legal and constitutional reasons why that's simply not workable uh, to get us the effect that we need. Or we can stand up a separate agency, probably at the cost of some 500 million or more startup, uh, startup costs. But given, for instance, if we had had better intelligence on things such as uh, the pandemic, for instance, imagine a $500 million investment to be able to have a better response in Canada and better strategic awareness to save us the billions that governments have had to pour in to basically bail us out from the situation that we're in would have been a modest investment to make for a substantial payoff. And there are countries that have made that investment, such as Taiwan, for whom that has paid off handsomely. All right, Mr. Luprecht, about 30 seconds left. But is there anything that our viewers can do to add their voices to push for Canada's own separate foreign intelligence service? 
Well, I think in Canada, we like to think about the world that Canadians wish it were, as opposed to confronting the world the way it is and the geostrategic environment that we are facing. And so we need to stop pretending that we're in this fireproof house far away from the world's troubles. And we need to start understanding that we are very much on the front lines of adversaries, Russia, China, and other, uh, other nations 